So today on Project Shop, we have this massive pile of aluminum wire. I also have this pile here. Now, when we're done stripping this aluminum wire, this is probably going to be the biggest amount I've ever stripped. I think a little over 500 pounds is the biggest uh, aluminum donut I've ever made. We're not really going to make a donut. We're going to strip this in full length. Um, and Steve's going to walk it right down out here into the, uh, into the back of the truck. We're just going to make a big donut back there. And then this pile here, if you look down in there, that's all copper. Not all copper, but there is a nice little nugget down there of copper. I have that whole trailer over there that has a bunch of thousand watt transformers and lights that need to be liberated. We got a whole bunch of big old, these are the biggest, brightest um, LEDs I've ever gotten. These are sport lighters. These are like first gen. Now, like I've said many times, these LEDs are not the end all be all, man. They're going bad left and right. I get piles of them. You know, one, they're out here in the South Florida weather. They're getting trashed. Some get lightning strikes. Uh, just the water getting to them. And the problem with these things is they're really not uh, made to be maintained or uh, repaired. They basically just want to uh, sell you a new light fixture. So, whereas those fixtures, those old HID fixtures, they could be 20 years old. You just continue to change the bulb and ballast. You get parts if you break a lens or whatever. You know, you can repair them and maintain them. And your initial investment would last you 10, 15, 20 years. These are probably four years old, maybe, maybe five at the most. And they're already having to change them out. So we're going to uh, separate them. Some are, they look like a lot of cast. It looks like the back of these big ones might have a piece of extruded, but we'll open them up and check. So I don't know how far we're going to get into all that, but main thing today is stripping wire, get that big coils out of here, and get this uh, table cleared off because we got to finish that welding job. So they actually like the job I did and I have enough material to do a whole bunch more. Not all of them, but I took 20 more sticks and we're going to do a lot more. Oh, and also I have all of these ACs, man. These things, uh, <laughs> this, uh, this big one here I'm keeping. And then we have actually a brand new AC handler in the box. You know, some of these things here, to buy them, you're talking about, uh, you know, five dollars $5,000, man. So we have everything from five tons to four tons to three tons, three ton. We got split units. This is all complete. I just took this apart to get it down. Uh, we got a guy coming in uh, Monday, I think. He says he'll give us five grand for everything. I don't know if I broke all this down, if I would get five grand, especially... I see there's aluminum coils there. I don't even know what that would be worth, but I don't think it'd be worth much. And if I can get five grand for this, I'd be okay with that. All right, we also got these uh, copper aluminum radiators. Or they might just be copper and brass, I don't know. But here's a big one here that we pulled out of one of them generators. They've been sitting over here for a while. Might as well get it out of here. So I'm gonna get the uh, stripping table set up. Steve will work on them. And then uh, we're gonna have a stripping party.
He's over there grinding them transformers that uh, won't go through the press. This is what we got. Pretty much a um, nice bucket. I'm going to say there might be three or 400 pounds in there. Pretty heavy. I'm just making room. I'm going to back my truck halfway in because it's raining out there. And we're going to get right on this aluminum wire.
Okay, we got a massive pile in the back of the truck here. That's got to be the biggest pile of uh, extruded aluminum I've ever had. I'm going to say between five and 600 pounds. Hopefully more. I think I get 70 cents a pound. Nice little chunk, a couple hundred bucks. Didn't take long at all to do this. Now I got straps that I pre-put down in there and uh, I'll cinch both sides so when I get to the scrap yard, they can just pick this whole mess right up out of the back of my truck. I have a couple barrels of broken glass I need to take to the uh, solid waste place, the, the dump. And uh, I'll just throw this right in the back of the trailer and uh, get rid of it then. Now, I do have garbage that's included over here, but if I had like one or two bags of this insulation, I already got two bags there. I could just go dump it over there for free, but I wouldn't want to put this much in here and uh, piss the maintenance company off. <laughs> so we're gonna take a break. I don't know if I want to get into uh, breaking down all them lights or not, but uh, we'll see how my back feels. But it would be nice to run some of these transformers. Steve already cut a bunch of them. I think we lost a couple down here in this pile. So we'll have to go fishing for them. But all in all, Copper King absolutely shredded that stuff. I was stripping some little nuggets earlier. I had to take the thing off of here because this thing was getting all clogged up. This wire stripper was not designed to be sitting sideways like this. I just, uh, because of how wide it is, you know, it's actually wider than that uh, stripping machine there. I really didn't have another way of mounting it, but this is what I'm thinking. I want to take this thing apart, see if I can't turn it around, because it really doesn't matter what side this plate is on. If I can get these spinning in the other direction, and I think the only thing I would have to do is take this thing apart and flip that gear to the other side or just put a different gear on it or just put a pulley on it and have it run off of this belt. I think I can slide all this mechanism up under here, you know, so have them drive shafts coming out here and then have this thing sitting proper. I'd have to turn everything around or move this machine over and set this on this side over here which i don't know if i want to do that i could i don't think it would really matter i would just have to build a bigger platform here but then that thing would be all up in uh these this pulley over here so i don't know i mean ultimately what i'd like to do is get this thing running off of that five horse motor and just have a clutch like another clutch somewhere over here where I can just engage that machine when I needed it, you know, and possibly speed it up. And for those of you who haven't seen the video where I took this all the way apart and passed, these rollers is actually pretty cool. This roller out here, if you look down here, there's two gears. This gear is smaller than that gear. So this shaft spins faster. So as that's pulling it through you know both those rollers are pulling it this one's actually slicing it because it's spinning slightly faster pretty cool setup i really like the little drive shafts on there um kind of dangerous having that open like that but i had to clean a lot of stuff was falling down that little hole right there um so i had to take this out and I believe there's some bearings in here. It's probably not good that all this shit's dropping down in there. And I need to check the oil level on this. I did plug the hole, but it was leaking and then it stopped. So we'll get into this in another time. Like someone said in the comments, I have too many projects, which is, which is true. So if you be a little patient, I guarantee you're gonna see some cool shit on this channel coming up here real soon. It's just one of those things, you know, half the time i don't have time to eat or sleep you know i'm just going 100 mile an hour just trying to keep the shop clean and get the scrap in and get the scrap out because 
you know this when i first started the youtube and everything my bills weren't even half of what they are now uh since i fully took over this shop and they increased the rent it's really not fun anymore for me you know it's actually like a job i have to work way harder than i have to than i've had to in, in a long time because the real estate and the rent down here in south florida is just absolutely out of control pretty much since that scamdemic that came along and um you know screwed everything up for a lot of people rent has almost doubled down here my last shop was bigger than this and i paid less money like half as much as i'm paying now you know i need to make like 1500 bucks a week just to pay my bills and trying to keep up with a youtube channel man it's like a whole full time i'm working two jobs but i like interacting with uh all the fans and the, and the subscribers and whatnot so i'm just gonna tough it up and uh keep on trucking <laughs> Okay, so I made it down here to Miami. It was getting kind of late yesterday, so uh, we decided to cut it off with just stripping the wire. But I did throw some of these aluminum rads on here. So here's my prediction. Somewhere around 300 pounds on the copper. Hopefully more. I'm going to say somewhere around either five or six. Man, it's a pretty big pile here, but it is aluminum. I'm going to say about 550. How about that? Maybe 50 pounds on the rads and, uh, or the aluminum rads and, I don't know, 50 pounds on them copper uh, brass radiators. So hopefully we can uh, just put a sling on there. There's our hopper. 650. Let's see if we can double that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, too bad that ain't all copper. Oh, he's in a pothole. Oh, sweet. We got all the bull crap in the middle, too. Sometimes you gotta lock your hubs in to get that copper. <laughs> Wait till you see what I'm about to pick up. Well, it's hard to tell, but she's squatting a little bit. We got tons of 500 back here, man. She full. <laughs> okay, here's the ticket for that job. We had 923 pounds of EC wire, 74 cents a pound. That actually came up four cents. For $683.02, it's the biggest amount of uh, aluminum wire I've ever had. The uh, brass auto rads, 39 pounds. So it was lighter than I thought. $1.90 a pound, 74.10. Bare bright copper, 333 pounds. My guess was around 300 pounds. Oh, my guess was like 600, five and 600. I was way off on that aluminum. So 333, I got 324 a pound for 1,087.92. And then we had some all aluminum rads, 39 pounds, 48 cents a pound. I don't know why that's less than like cast and sheet. Uh, 1872 for $1,854.76. Now, the rads and stuff, I think I got all that for free. But that copper and that aluminum pretty much came from the same job. And I think I was eight or $900 into that. So we basically doubled our money on that. So that's not bad. So if you come this far, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Uh, the whole back of my truck is full of 500 MCM. And I got some tires right there because I've been burning through some rubber lately, man. Had a blowout on my trailer right there. See that? That was uh, kind of catastrophic. <laughs> so uh, I got these tires here for $121 a piece, I think. 
Paramax. So my grandfather's in the tire business, so I just give him a call. He's up in Maine. And then uh, I go down and pick this up from the uh, tire warehouse down here. And we're gonna replace this. And we're gonna have to uh, look into the ball joints because my tire is cooked. We still got plenty of tread out here, but nothing over here. So we got some front end issues we gotta take care of. And that's actually the spare tire. Somewhere around here, I got the other aluminum rim like this. So we're gonna put these two new tires on here and then go get um, an alignment or whatever and check all the ball joints and tie rod ends and whatnot. So for now, I'm gonna be doing tire duty. I'll tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard. Probably just crack them. Whoops. That was a different style. This style here, the ones that I got out of those light fixtures. Now I seen a video of a guy the other day, and he was he was breaking these and and um, hitting them off like this. Okay. Here's the issue what I have with that. I mean, whatever works for you, but when you when you're knocking them off like that, you're you're wedging it in there and wedging it and wedging it and wedging it. So it's not going to want to come straight off. Best bet 
is to prop it up on something and you want to get these two things sitting on something like that. That way it goes down straight. I'm just going to knock a couple of these out by hand real quick. Now, I like this wedge because if you were doing this by hand, once you knock that first one, that wedge will get down in there and almost penetrate that big coil. Most of the time, if you can hit it hard enough on that first blow, they'll go through, or at least get you far enough. And see this here? This one has a piece of steel still stuck in there. A lot of times, with the hydraulics, it really don't matter, but when you're beating it out, if there's one piece of steel in there, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to want to wedge that coil in there, and it's just going to make it more difficult for you to get it out. enough of that we'll get uh, <laughs> a copyright strike um, anyway also I just had my property returned to me um, so our, our personal safety today is going to be brought to you by six hour p220 45 ACP and uh, this AR 15 that you've guys seen in a previous video this is the one that actually jammed on me at the gun range and then uh, once I lubed it up and it ran fine, we ran a bunch of ammo through it, not a problem. Um, so it was pretty much just dry. But uh, they were literally just returned to me because um, if you don't have any boxes that look like this, you've never been robbed by a bunch of corrupt police and then uh, forced them to give you your shit back. <laughs> but that's for another video.